The liar paradox is very simple and very old. It goes back at least to the year 2265. I am lying. You say you are lying, but if everything you say is a lie, then you are telling the truth. Illogical, illogical. Boy, the original Star Trek from the 60s was wild, huh? Come on, Spark, I know that look. <laughs> okay, the liar paradox in the real world goes back at least to Eubulides, the ancient Greek philosopher and student of Euclid in the 4th century BCE. That's the year negative 400. This sentence is false. What do we make of a sentence like this? Is it true? Well, when a sentence is true, you look at what the sentence says. Suppose that there's a sentence in here, and we know that this sentence, whatever it is, is true. Well, we look at what that sentence says. The ship is on fire. So if the sentence is true, then the ship is on fire. Back to the liar sentence. If this sentence is true, well then we look at what the sentence says. And what it says about itself is that it's false. So if it's true, then it's false. And that's a contradiction. So this option is out. So then the sentence is false, right? Well, the sentence says that it's false. And so if this claim here is itself false, then it's false that it's false, which means it's true. And that's a contradiction. Or another way to put this is just that the claim of the sentence, the claim that the sentence is false, well, that claim is false. So it's false that it's false. Okay, well, if it's false that it's false, then it's not false. So this sentence is not true. It's not false. What if we say that it's both true and false? Unfortunately, that's not gonna work because in order to be both of two things, you have to be each of them individually. To make an analogy, if a character is not well written and it's not well acted, then it definitely can't be both well written and well acted. As we all know, the greatest captain was Jean-Luc Picard. William Shatner is old and rich enough that he's not gonna care. He's not gonna sue me. That's why it can't be both. We've already eliminated, for example, true, so it can't be both true and anything else. So it definitely can't be both true and false. What about neither true nor false? This one might work, but it's controversial. You might have thought that all sentences or claims could only be either true or false. Logicians call this the principle of bivalence, the idea that there's only two options, true and false. But since it's clear that in this case, neither of those two options works, it's tempting to introduce a third option. A sentence or a claim can be true, it can be false, or it can be neither true nor false. And this works. This sentence is not true or false, it's neither true nor false. No paradox, end of video. Wait a minute. What if we replace the word false with not true? Logicians have a name for this sentence. They call it the strengthened liar sentence. Remember, the paradox arose originally because there were only two options and neither of those two options worked. So we introduced a third option. But now, now we're talking about the category of not true. And notice, false is one way of being not true. A sentence that's false is not true, but being neither true nor false, that's also one way of being not true. By changing the word false, to not true, what we've done is we've regenerated the situation in which there were only two options. There's the option of true and the option of not true. This whole area encompasses the larger category of not true. False is not true and neither true nor false. That's another way of being not true. So we're back to having just two options. And if it turns out that neither of those two options work, we're gonna regenerate the paradox. Is this sentence true? Well, the sentence just says that it's not true. So if it's true, then you check whatever it says. Oh, it says it's not true, so if it's true, then it's not true. Okay, this option is out. Is it false? Well, if a sentence is false, then you just have to reverse whatever the sentence says. The sentence says that it's not true. 
So if it's false, we do the opposite of that, which is that it's true. So if this sentence is false, then the sentence is true. Contradiction, this option's out. Is it both true and false? No, because in order to be both of these, you need to be each of them individually. We've already eliminated both of them individually, so it's definitely not both true and false. Finally, is it neither true nor false? Being neither true nor false is one version of being not true. And the sentence says that it's not true. So if the sentence is neither true nor false, well, then this is accurate. What the sentence says about itself is accurate. Well, if a sentence is accurate, then it's true. So if this sentence is neither true nor false, then it's true. And it says that it's not true. So it ends up being true and not true. That's a contradiction. This option is out as well. What's going on here? Well, if you've ever heard of this other paradox, Russell's paradox, which I have a video about, link in the description, then you might have noticed that these two paradoxes, though different, have something very important in common. They both seem to result from self-reference. Russell's paradox results from the fact that a set can contain itself. And the liar paradox seems to result from the fact that a sentence can be about itself. So maybe what we should do in order to wriggle out of this paradox is call into question the possibility of self-reference. Like, look at this phrase, this sentence. How do we even know that this sentence is talking about this sentence? Ah, but this won't work because we can generate a liar sentence without any phrase, anything like this sentence. And we do this by naming the sentence. We can name things. We can name people, places, things. Well, a sentence is a thing, so let's name it. Let's call it a uh, fribble. These are called fribbles. Blech. No, they're not. They're called tribbles. There was an episode about them. Oh, can CBS sue me? Now the sentence reads, fribble is not true. Fribble is just a name for the sentence. So this sentence says of itself that it's not true. And this is gonna work. Like, we don't have any weird, uncertain, ambiguous phrases like this sentence. It's pretty clear that this sentence is referring to itself. Or is it? The name fribble is just shorthand for the whole sentence, right? So if we want to know for sure what exactly this name stands for, then we should just swap it out for the thing that it stands for. Okay, so we're saying that this sentence, fribble is not true, we're saying that that sentence is not true. So now we know what we're talking about. Oh, but the name fribble is right there, right? And that's just shorthand for the sentence. So in order to be really sure what exactly we're talking about, we should replace that for the thing that it stands for. Okay, now we're done. The sentence fribble is not true is not true, and that sentence is not true. Oh, but the name fribble is still in there, so we have to replace it again. This has been an argument against the possibility of self-reference. When we have a term in a sentence that refers to the sentence itself, we end up in this regress, this endless cycle of replacing that name with the thing that that name is supposed to stand for. We keep trying to clarify what exactly this sentence is about, but we never reach clarity. So maybe self-reference is impossible after all. If we're trying to resolve the liar paradox, this is good. It means that self-reference is impossible, the sentence can never fully or successfully refer to itself, and so the paradox can't arise. This is where most discussions of the liar paradox in public discourse end. But the professional logicians know that there's more. We can generate the liar paradox or something almost exactly like it without any sentence that even tries to refer to itself. First, notice that a sentence can easily and unproblematically refer to another sentence. This sentence says, the sentence below is false. And then the sentence below says, Kirk was a good captain. Now, this is false. Kirk was not a good captain. A captain has to be responsible. They are entrusted with the lives of their crew. They can't just go around trying to hook up with every alien babe they come across. Anyway, there's no problem here. This sentence is false, and this sentence, which is about this one, 
says that it's false, and so this sentence is true. Like, no problem. But if this is possible, then we can generate a pair of sentences that work together to do the same thing that the liar sentence did in the first place. I'll go through this one real quick. Let's just focus on the top sentence. Is this top sentence true? Well, if it's true, we have to check what it says. The sentence below is false. So if this sentence is true, then this one is false. But this sentence just says that this first sentence is true. So if this one's false, then this one's false. So if the top sentence is true, then the top sentence is false. Contradiction. Okay, what if the top sentence is false? Well, it says that the sentence below is false. So if it's false, then the sentence below is true. Well, if this sentence below is true, then this sentence is true, because this one down here just says that this one up here is true. So if this sentence is false, then this sentence is true. Contradiction. And then the same thing for both true and false, and then neither true nor false, we could run the same thing where we replace this with not true, and we're exactly back to where we were with the strengthened liar sentence. And we did all of this without any kind of self-reference. These sentences aren't referring to themselves. They are referring to each other, and they make this kind of circle. The problem, of course, comes from this kind of circular thing, but it's not really a problem for self-reference. Any attempt to ban self-reference from our language in order to prevent liar sentences from arising, that's doomed to failure because we can generate liar sentences with multiple sentences. In the end, the liar paradox shows that there is a deep problem with one of two things. First, our notion of truth itself. The way that logicians formalize the notion of truth within a logical language is with what are called T schemas. T stands for truth, and the letter P stands for proposition, and so we're just talking about any sentence or any proposition. You can think of these as inference rules, like rules for how you can think logically. If you can say something, P, like that Jean-Luc was the better captain, if you can say that, then you can also say that P is true, that Jean-Luc was the better captain is true. And then you can go the other direction. If you can say that something is true, Jean-Luc was the better captain is true, well then you can just drop the is true and you can also say Jean-Luc was the better captain. You don't have to remember any of this, you just have to know that this is a really intuitive way of capturing the notion of truth. And one way to get out of the liar paradox is just to drop this. But that seems crazy. The other way out might be worse, and that's to abandon classical logic, which goes all the way back to Aristotle and then gets developed by Frege. You replace it with dialetheanism or gap theories. I'm not gonna go into what those are, but they're less intuitive, they're weird, and they seem less logical. And that's bad if you're developing logic. The point is that this is an area of live and active debate today in philosophy and logic. I should thank two things for help with this video. The first one is Tim Maudlin's 2004 book, Truth and Paradox. I've never met Maudlin, but I read his book back in graduate school, and then years later, before recording this video, I skimmed it again. It was very helpful. Thank you, Tim. And the other is Ethan Jerzak, who was in my cohort in graduate school, and now he is the renowned assistant professor of philosophy at the National University of Singapore. And we had a Zoom conversation where he fixed a few things that were wrong in my understanding of the liar paradox.